Hey, greetings. Hello there. Welcome to edition number 49 of Joy Sightings. Besides publishing this episode as a regular episode number 49 at Joy Sightings, I'm also using this episode to advertise the existence of Joy Sightings at my two other podcast sites. The Joy Sightings website is joysightings.info. So, spelled as one word, joysightings.info. Most of the Joy Sightings series has been reading the parables of Safed the Sage. Safed the Sage was a congregational pastor over a hundred years ago. Actually, his name was William E. Barton. And today, and for the last few episodes, I have been reading from the little book, the Wit and Wisdom of Safed the Sage. This and a few other books by William E. Barton are in the public domain and available for free download at the Library of Congress website. William E. Barton first published these parables in a Sunday school magazine that he edited for his denomination but they were popular and published in other places, in newspapers, I think, and also in these separate little books. This book, as I have said before, is The Wit and Wisdom of Safed the Sage and was published in 1919. My own parents were born, my mother in 1910 and my father in 1911, And I'm now 69 years old, so these come from the period of time of your great-grandfather, or something like that, a long time ago. One of the charming things of William E. Barton's style is that he used King James English in an affected way. His writing in normal ways would show that it's a hundred years old and different than we talk now, King James English, in his day, was not in vogue. This was an affected usage. The three parables I'll read today are The Scrub Team, The June Christmas Tree, and Things One Wants to Know. The Scrub Team There was a day in spring when I walked in the city and I came to a baseball park, and the gate was open and I entered and I sat on the bleachers, where were only a few men. For the time of baseball was not yet, but the team was practicing. And the team was arrayed in new uniforms, but the men against whom they played had no uniforms. And I asked one who sat nigh unto me, and inquired, saying, Who are these, and whence came they? And he said, These are the scrub team. Behold, the home team will not do a thing to them but to skin them alive. And it was even as he said, the home team did wipe up the earth with the scrub team, for they were better players. And I said, Wherefore doth not the scrub team play with another scrub team, that it may stand a chance to win, and have whereof to glory? And he said, Because it hath greater glory in helping to get the home team in good condition. Behold, the boys of the scrub team are from this same neighborhood, and they are themselves near good players. And next Saturday doth the season open between the home team and the team from the other side of town. Therefore doth the scrub team rejoice to be licked to a frazzle, that it may promote the welfare of the home team, and get it into good shape for the game. Yea, and on the other side of town, at this very minute, doth the home team of that side play against another scrub team, that doth take its walloping with glee for the like cause. And I came away rejoicing, and I said, Declare unto me no more that altruism is dead, and that we live in a world where every man is for himself, and the devil doth take the hindmost. There be many signs that it is not so. 
And I said, I will never lose my faith that men are capable of heroic unselfishness so long as there is a vacant lot with eighteen boys playing thereon, the nine in uniform going forth to glory, and the other nine laboring in obscurity and taking its licking with glee. And I said, I have played on the diamond, and I have known the joy that thrilleth the arms of a lad when the bat doth strike the ball. Yea, I have heard the plaudit of the multitude when I have come in over the home plate. But I recall from the memories of my youth that I was not always a member of the uniformed team, and that it was joy and not pain to be gloriously licked by the home team that it might go forth and lick the other fellows. And I said to myself that I liked to see good baseball played by professionals, but nothing revived my faith in human nature more than to see a practice game in which the home team was licking the scrub team and the scrubs rejoicing thereat. Remember that William E. Barton was a congregational pastor, and in the dialect that he's using, he talks of the synagogue, by which he means the church, and the Sabbath day, by which he means Sunday. The June Christmas Tree The daughter of the daughter of Keturah stood at the door of the synagogue and waited for me, and it was the Sabbath day. And I spake unto her, and she answered me sorrowfully, and her countenance was fallen. And I said, What's the matter with my little girl? And she said, They told me that it would be a tree, and it was not a tree. And I said unto her, Tell me about it, that I may know when a tree is not a tree. And she said, They did tell me in the Sunday school to bring a present that I might hang it upon the June Christmas tree. And I said, I know all about that. It's for the little children in China, and because the box must be packed long beforehand in order that it may reach the little Chinese children in time for Christmas, therefore do they gather the presents in June. And they intended that on this day they would hang the presents upon the elm tree that groweth hard by the synagogue, and that the children would sing around it here, and then send the presents to China. But it rained in the night, and the sod is wet. Therefore did they hold the exercises in the Sunday school room, and because they had no tree therein, therefore did they stretch a cord whereon presents might be hung. And she lamented much, and she said, They told me that it would be a June Christmas tree, and that we must bring picture books and toys for the little Chinese children in the hospital, and hang them upon the tree. And there was not a tree, but only a string. And I sought to comfort her, but she said, They told me that it would be a tree, and it was nothing save only a string. Now I was once a child, and I remember that my disappointments were not many, but they were very keen. And there were some of them that I remember still. And I wonder if the little maiden will not remember as long as she shall live that the June Christmas tree was nothing but a string. And I took her by the hand, and I walked with her to the elm that was to have been the Christmas tree, and I told her how beautiful the tree would be in China. But she said, They told me that it would be a tree, and it was not a tree, nor was it anything save only a string. And I thought of the Garden of Eden, and of Eve, and how she had been told of the tree of life, and had thought to eat thereof, but how life as she knew it was just a string with one perplexing thing after another. Indeed, there have been days when mine own tree of life yielded to me the same bitter fruit. It was not save a string which might be pulled and pulled, 
and it came to no end but to many a tangle. But I have learned that even upon such a string there may be hung those precious gifts of sacrifice and love, which I verily believe in some celestial kingdom will shine among the fruits of a tree whose leaves are for the healing of the nations. Therefore do I seek this day to fasten the ends of my string of life a little tighter, and to pin upon it each several day some gift of kindness or good deed, for who knoweth whether my string be not one of the roots of God's tree of life? Things One Wants to Know Now there came to me two men who were clad in gay apparel, and they drave up to my door in a chariot, and they honked, and they spake unto the maid, and asked, Doth Sophed live here? And is the old prophet at home? And the maid answered and said, He is at home, but he is busy. I will ask if he can see you. And they answered, Sayest thou he is busy? Now would not that jar thee? What hath he to be busy about? And they entered, and they said, Canst thou tell us what we want to know? And I said, I cannot. And one spake to the other, and said, It is just as I expected, only I did not think he would admit it. And I answered, I can tell some men what they want to know, but not you, because the things ye want to know are not the things best worth knowing. And one of them spake, and said, The old fellow hath some punch in him, and cometh back right well. And they consulted together and said to me, We want to know whether to buy stocks or sell now that the end of the war approacheth. And if thou art a prophet, thou canst advise us to our advantage. And I said, I have already given you your answer. Ye seek me because ye wish not to know the things that are of the most worth. And they said to me, Oh, come off! Cut out all that stuff! Hast thou power to tell how the market will go? We think not, otherwise thou wouldst gather in the coin for thyself, whereas thou art a poor man. Nevertheless, if thou art a prophet, here is thy chance. Put us wise to the market, and if thou givest us a right tip, we will give thee ten talents of silver. And I answered in the words of the apostle, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought to purchase the gift of God for money. And one of them looked at the other, and tapped his forehead with one finger, and looked at me, and then at his companion, and winked, and he said, There is no one at home.